Character drive is one of the most important and impactful elements of any story. In my opinion, character drive is more important than clever plot twists or an incredible setting or other elements of a story. Those are important too, but we can all think of examples of stories that led off with a great premise, but then just never really seemed to fully satisfy the promise that they began with. They're fine, but they just don't seem to really capture us in the same way that we thought they would when we started, or vice versa. I can think of lots of examples of extremely popular books and movies and stories that maybe didn't have the most interesting plot in the universe, or maybe didn't have the most exciting locations and scenes or the most wittily written dialogue ever written, but they had great character drive and the drive and motivation of their protagonist or antagonist or ideally both together creates almost like a magnetic pull that draws us in and captures our attention because we're leaning into and compelled by the same sort of drive and motivation that we recognize in ourselves and that resonance or curiosity that we as we begin to recognize the the utter humanness of drive and motivation in an interesting character locks in a, a readers and audiences attention faster than anything else I know and sustains it through the course of a story better than any other element of storytelling that I know so in this video we're going to break down and discuss in thorough detail all of the elements that make up character drive so that you can better understand it and better employ Employ it in the stories that you write or so that you can better understand how it is employed in the stories that you love and what makes the characters that you love and remember so fondly so compelling and interesting and motivating. So if that sounds like your cup of tea then welcome to the story castle my fellow story nerd and let's dive into it. So I think of character drive as the combination of a character's motivation and agency, and we will break down each of those terms in a bit more detail, but in broad strokes, a character's motivation are the things that they want and need, and their agency are the particular ways that they go about trying to get those things or fulfill those needs. When you start to think about it, character drive really is the element that defines the story. The introduction of a character drive for the protagonist is the thing that starts the story in the first place. When an inciting incident, some kind of external event, disrupts the life of a character sufficiently enough that they now have something that they badly want or desperately need or are compelled to do or pursue because of that event, well, now we have a story. In every story, there's always events that happened before the story starts, and then the story starts because now we have a story to follow. We have a character with drive to follow as they pursue that drive, and we have a story question, which is essentially, will this character be able to achieve their motivation in the way that they intend to achieve it or try to achieve it, yes or no? And when that story question is answered sufficiently and satisfactorily, yes, they get it or no they don't get it or yes they get it but not in the ways that they thought they would or however it is answered we have the end of the story so character drive literally defines when the story starts when the story ends and propels the characters and our own like I said our own attention and interest through the course of events through the twists and the turns and the unexpected surprises and the setbacks and the challenges and the obstacles that have to be overcome in pursuit of that motivation, that drive that they have. And in many of the first novels or second novels of some of the beginning writers that I coach and work with is what I would kind of call just mushy drive. It's very rare that an author will write a story where the character has no drive at all. Usually we, we intuitively have that sense that oh, well, the character needs to need or want something. But very often that need or that want, the drive that they have is weak. It's either, it's something that is small enough that it's sort of like, well, it should have been easier for them to just get it quicker. So then we kind of have to pad the story with less interesting things to create a long enough story to count. Or it's not compelling enough to adequately answer the question like, why would this character go through all that hell when, when things get rough? Why do they keep going? Why don't they just quit and go home? Because their drive or the stakes aren't really high enough to validate the fact that they pushed through in the first place. Great story 
stories create irresistible drive, compelling drive, that we as the audience immediately recognize how critical it is to that character or how critical it is to the, their community or the wider world, that's stakes. When the stakes are adequately high for a, a character or community or the wider world, then we get it. We're in for that journey because we want to see how that is going to play out. We, we can't help but be compelled by those stakes. So let's break down the two elements of motivation and agency to sort of better understand how you can create really compelling character drive in the story that you're writing. The character's motivation itself kind of breaks down again into two parts. A character's motivation is formed both of their external wants and their internal needs. Having some dimension of both of those things is really important to develop a more fully three-dimensional, well-fleshed-out and interesting motivation. The external wants part is usually pretty easy, and that's the box that we most often see ticked. They want to win the county fair blue ribbon. They want to find true love. They want to, you know, save their family from famine or, you know, stop the evil banker from repossessing their farm or whatever. They want something, right? The character wants a thing. They want something that they think will make their life better or make them happy or make other people happy. And it's, it's an external thing to them. Like they need to go out and achieve it. And they think if once they do achieve it, their life will be improved and they will be happier. And that may actually even be, be true. Maybe they're, you know, an orphan who grew up poor and now they want to get rich so that they're no longer poor because they think that'll make them happy. Whatever it is, depending on the genre that you're writing in, it would look a lot of different ways. And it's important, you know, having a clear external want that you can break, you can kind of break down and define as, as clearly and as simply as possible. You know, James Bond wants to stop bad guy from blowing up the world or Pick a thing. The external want is very often the thing that will compel your character to action, especially earlier on in the story. But if all we have is the external want part, it's a bit shallow and not fully um, compelling enough to sustain our interests. Like the external want, like I said, is important, but it's also, it's also insufficient. It's a bit shallow. It's good, but not enough. Because if all you have is the external want, my character wants to find the treasure, my character wants to save the day, my character wants to return the ring to whatever, you know, pick a thing. It's difficult to define an external want that is compelling enough to drive your character through all of the opposition and obstacles that are going to stand in the way of them achieving that external want. It can be done, but whenever you're developing a really compelling character motivation, spend some time also thinking about the internal need that is also driving your character. Usually characters are very aware of the external want. They know that they need to go defuse the bomb or they know that they met this attractive person that they want to be now develop a romantic relationship with. They know that they want to go beyond Broadway or whatever it is that that's the thing they know they want. Very often the a character's internal need, they are less aware of or maybe completely even unaware of. A character might want to go beyond Broadway, but maybe they need that because they secretly, what they really need is to believe that they have worth and value and they have kind of projected that need onto this box of, well, if I can become a famous Broadway star, then I will feel validated and feel like I have worth and value. It's the thing I really need most. When you get that right, when you create that kind of electrical current between want and need, yes, the character wants this, but what they need that is really at the heart of what's really driving them, the need is the thing that we as the audience get invested in, we recognize it, because we have that own sense of, you don't always know as a person what you really, what you need, but you're driven by the things that you need. You need, uh, usually it's more elemental things than external things. It's something, it might be acceptance, or validation, or a sense of self-worth, or love, or a place to belong. It's more rooted elemental things. When a character has a clear need that is sort of projected onto their want, but oftentimes need and want will exist in a little bit of tension or even a contradistinction to one another. As the story plays out, it becomes clearer and clearer that what the character thinks they want is pulling them maybe even a little further away from what they 
need. That tension is electric and engrossing and entertaining. And it's one of the things that sustains a great story over the course of pages and scenes. So let's get some examples. Uh, Pride and Prejudice, one of my actual favorite stories, and I think one of the greatest romances ever written. Uh, Elizabeth Bennet, initially at the start of the story, she wants to... She doesn't even really want to find a husband, but she kind of just... She wants the world to get off her back. She knows she's going to need to do it. So she sort of, she wants to find a path forward in life that she finds tolerable. Like her, her want is pretty low. She, she basically just wants to get further on and get launched as an adult in the world, ideally in a way that is not absolutely horrible and intolerable to her because sort of the best that she can envision is something she doesn't completely hate. But what she needs, what she really needs, is to find a relationship that is her equal, that, that will allow her to fully be the complex, intelligent, wonderful person that she is without completely um, shutting her down. She doesn't even believe that that's possible at the beginning of the story. And, and sort of fulfilling societal expectations, taking care of her family, and finding a path forward for herself that she wants increasingly as she meets Mr. Darcy and then the sparks fly and the tensions you know build and build and build and build and the the sort of best I think inflection point in the whole story between her want and her need is in the dynamic when she begins to also be attracted to Mr. Wickham because there's this sense of like well here's kind of what I thought I wanted here's a man who doesn't irritate me too much that is handsome enough he's interesting enough like he kind of ticks the boxes and he's interested back in her and she doesn't yet know some of the things about him his character that are problematic there's this draw about halfway to two-thirds of the way through the story that kind of as the tension of the narrative has begun to flag a little bit, it ramps it up to 11 because we, whether we realize it or not, what we are watching in that part of the story is the rising tension between what Elizabeth wants and what she really needs. And she's leaning, there's first with Mr. Collins and then with Mr. Wickham, there are these opportunities to sort of tick the box of what she thinks she wants at the cost of what she really needs. And what we're holding our breath for is to see if she can hold out and also grow and change enough as a character to finally get what she really needs, which is a love that is bigger and more real and more complete than one she even aspired to in the first place. It's one of the reasons that's such a great story because right there from the very first page embedded in the entire narrative is a wonderful tension between the protagonist's want and need and her drive to go and pursue it. But as I said earlier on, a character's drive, overall drive, is a combination of their motivation, which we've been talking about, external want, internal need, and their agency, the way that they go about trying to fulfill or get that thing. And I think it's really important to sort of keep those two elements in mind, because again, you can have a character with a really clear motivation that is actually still not a very compelling character because they sort of sit around badly wanting a thing, pining, wishing, hoping, and that is boring. <laughs> it's boring and sometimes it can even be irritating to watch that as an audience member. So it's like, great, you want this thing so badly that, oh, you just, oh, so wish. I want to see you do something about it. What are you going to do about it? The doing is a big part of what makes the story interesting, what makes the story, period. So when you're thinking about your character's overall drive, don't just think about what they want and what they need, but also think about who are they and what are the specific and unique and interesting ways that this character is going to attempt to actually fulfill their motivation or achieve their motivation. In a legal thriller like Erin Brockovich, for example, uh, the character of Erin Brockovich, she wants to win the case because she needs to prove her worth to herself and to sort of her male colleagues and the world at large to prove that she's just as good or better, right? Uh, other things as well, but that's sort of central to the character. But her agency is her sort of kick the doors down, crass, no nonsense, almost unlawyerly or unprofessional approach to both finding the evidence that she needs and then proving the case. Like she, she goes about it 
in really interesting and distinctive and unique ways that make sense for her character, where you, if you, you know, dropped a different kind of character into that story, you would have a very different kind of story. A big part of what makes her a great character is the her agency, the way that she goes about trying to fulfill her want and her need in the story. And sometimes, it, it really small changes to make a character's uh, actions or behaviors more distinctive, more unique, or more interesting is kind of all it takes to go from bland to amazing, from, from kind of cardboard cutout scene filler to super memorable. I think this is actually one of the elements that makes John Wick as a character in his series, John Wick series, uh, as, as great of a character as he is. And what separates it, one of the things that separates it from other maybe more run-of-the-mill action stories. You, a lot of times in an action story, the protagonist mostly only has a want. They probably don't even really have a particularly clearly developed need that's driving them. They just want to beat the bad guy. They want to save the day. They, there's an external thing, well, you know, do this or we'll kill your family. Okay, now I want to do this thing. And sometimes, just because of the dynamics of the genre, the protagonist of that story isn't necessarily given a particularly great, clearly uh, a defined need. John Wick is. Yeah, he, he wants, initially, he wants to be left alone, and then he wants revenge, and then it kind of spirals from there. He wants to kind of get back out of the world that he had gotten back out of previously. But all the way along, he's driven by this need to sort of find peace, and he, he needs to sort of to be able to accept and forgive himself and, and find a way to exist in the world without hating who he is, even though who he is is what makes him who he is, right? And, and that need for sort of peace and a sense of self-worth, ironically, even though he is so good at, at his gig, <laughs> so good at what he does, that on its own isn't enough for him. He needs more than that. He needs a, like a moral justification for living. He found it for a little while and then he lost it when he had to come back into the assassin world. You have good want and need tension already right from the first story and then his pursuit of trying to get what he needs back again. Really interesting. But you also have his agency. The way that John Wick goes about doing his thing is extremely um, specific and unique to the character. And I don't just mean how cool all the action scenes are. I think one of the things to me about John Wick as a character and his agency is, is his incredible grit. It's, it's watching him get hit so hard <laughs> in some in so many different situations and he's all... It, there's never real moments of of doubt or whininess about John. He never, it's like, no matter how bad it is, he's like, well, it's either gonna kill me or I'm gonna beat it. And I'm gonna keep fighting to beat the odds in front of me until I can't anymore in a way that is just, I think, extremely compelling. It's certainly distinctive of him as a character. And it just, it makes every scene that he's in really fascinating because then that way the writers are able to keep raising the stakes and raising the stakes and throwing bigger and bigger challenges at him and hitting him harder and harder and every time it be because we've become familiar with this element of his agency this is a big part of what makes John Wick who he is as a character there's always that little bit of a question of like is this gonna be the one is this gonna be the straw that broke the camel's back oh no, or is it not like can he find a way not just to oh, to beat the odds because we see that in every action movie right can the protagonist like is he good enough at fighting and we kind of already know like yeah he's probably gonna win because that's how most action movies play out right that's how most action stories play out yeah so he may get hit a few times but he's probably gonna win in the end that's not the compelling question in this case it's like can that bulldog you know, inexhaustible grit that John Wick possesses that is unique of him as a character and the way that he goes about trying to fulfill his want and his need, trying to fulfill his motivation. Can it survive these incredibly uh, rising stakes and the mounting odds that are stacked against him? So as you are working at either writing a character in your own stories or, if, like I said, if you've just been enjoying hearing more about how these great characters that you love so much uh, work the way that they work, what's underneath the hood, keep in mind that tension of character drive, both the tension in their motivation between an external want and internal need, and the particular kind of agency that that character possesses, the way that they go about trying to fulfill their wants and their needs that makes them unique, that makes them memorable, that makes them different from other characters, especially different from other characters in their genre. And I think as you do, you will find that you better understand and can write truly unforgettable characters.